Die Nawek moest ons in Kurante lees dat ons departement van water en sanitatie bankrot is. Die departement ontkend dit. Professor Mike Muller, waterkenner van WITS, sluit nou bij me aan. Professor, welcome. Are you seeing yet signs of decay in national water management? You know, you look at... Uh the problems at national level a lot of different ways. You look at what comes out of the tap in the morning, it's not really much to do with the national department, that's your municipality. What worries me most is the very long-term things. Are we going to have water in 2020? At that level, I'm very worried. At that level, I see a lot of failures. And in between, um, we can blame droughts, we can blame newspapers. But uh, things are not going very well, let's put it that way. Uh, okay, but when a newspaper like City Press reports that uh, the National Department is 4.3 billion rands in the red, why should you know, civilians take notice? Well, it's, it says that there's something wrong. And I've tried quite hard to find out what's wrong. And I think what is happening is there's lots of emergencies around. And the minister has been trying to patch those up. And before I've mentioned that she outsources irregularities. Instead of doing the wrong things inside the department, she directs a water board, for instance, to fix a problem. Don't worry, I'll pay for it. And she actually can give a water board a directive, but if she gives them a directive to spend money, she must find the money. So I think what's happened is she's solved a problem by asking somebody else to break the rules, and those people are now asking for the money. So the department isn't bankrupt, but they've made a promise to somebody that they can't keep, and I think that's what happened with the City Press story. OK, but, but is the department underfunded? Because uh, there were other reports in the last few weeks uh, that uh, Minister Nombola Mokonyane's department uh, left a billion rands in their budget unspent in the last few years. Look, I, uh, certainly from what I've seen, rather than being underfunded, the, the department has got too much money. I've seen, for instance, one place where they had two choices. You can fix the problem this way or you can fix the problem that way. This way costs three times as much as that way. So which way did they choose? The one that costs three times as much. Now, if you're going to waste money, you'll run out of money. And I do think that there is plenty of evidence, and I've been given very specific evidence, that the department is wasting money. So if it's short of money, it should really try and be more efficient and use money better, well, could speaking imagine, as an engineer. Well, yeah. I could imagine that the Department of Water Affairs is a good place to launder, uh, to launder funds. Uh, but let's talk about the Lesotho Highlands project, where the minister was directly implicated in spending 26 billion rands in a way that was not entirely proper. The public protector now um, is meaning to investigate this. Um, have you any reason to believe that uh, there was wrongdoing? Unfortunately, she hasn't spent the 26 billion. The problem is that she still hasn't started the project, the project that's going to keep Joburg and Pretoria and Ekoroleni and all the areas around that's going to keep us with water security, which should have been finished in 2019. She hasn't started. But because she's delayed so long, the price of the project is going up. And so that 26 billion should have been maybe 18 billion. And this is what happens if you delay. The costs go up, you waste money, and then you complain that you don't have enough. So I think that's a good example of the problems. You cause a delay, and then you actually spend more money than you need to. Let's just look at the way in which the department has been spending money. On the screen now, 1.7 billion rands, according to the Auditor General, uh, was spent irregularly um, in uh, 2016, 68 million rand uh, wasted. And they haven't done a skills audit, Mike, in 15 years. Surely that's, that's gross negligence. You know, uh, I had lots of fights in my time with the Auditor General. The Auditor General is picking up very specific little items. The question one has to ask is the big question. All of these things that are being done or not being done, what is the impact? Now, one question I keep asking is, do we know how are we going to keep the cities of South Africa, water secure into the future. Where are the plans? And when I look, I discover that the planning budget has been shrunk because they're spending all this money on pipes, which sometimes are the wrong pipes and sometimes don't work. So we're not doing the planning that's necessary. Now, frankly, I don't care if they've done a skills audit or not. What I do care is have they done the planning? Are they still doing it? Because you have to update it every year. And I'm afraid we're seeing that a lot of the essential work 
isn't being properly done. So who must answer for the fact that, so Die Burger reported two days ago that Cape Town has 110 days of water left. Whose fault is that? No, I'm not sure that we want to go into who is responsible for the rain or not here. Um, Cape Town has had a drought. Cape Town's had a worse drought than we have up here. But uh, they have to introduce restrictions. What worries me is that there's still a debate going on in Cape Town about what to do next. Now, 10 years ago, there was a set of recommendations saying, here are the things that you can do next. And I asked the other day of one of the DA politicians, so what are you doing? She said to me, I didn't know we had these recommendations. Now, this worries me because it suggests that both the city of Cape Town as well as the department aren't looking to the future. They're all sort of running around in small circles looking at today's problems. But the job of a national department is to have a strategic view, to be looking five and ten years ahead. And if they're not doing that, you have to understand that there's problems building up all over the country. Okay, but only skilled people will see that the, a, a problem is looming on the horizon. Um, one of the reports said um, that a great many of the engineers, for example, in the department are approaching 65 years of age and will soon retire. And there's been no pipeline planning, excuse the, uh, the pun, but there's been no planning here to position uh, youngsters to take over from there. You know, there are some youngsters and we always knew that there was going to be this dip in supply. I think what perhaps should worry us even more is that there's no continuity of management to, for instance, look at the problem of skills. The average length of stay of a head of department in the Department of Water Affairs since I left in 2005 is one year and two months. And then they change. And they just get into, they find out where the office is and where the coffee comes from, and they change. And they just work out who are the people that they should be talking to, and they change. We've had 11 people serving as head of department since 2005. You simply cannot manage skills or manage strategy or manage your cash flow if you have that kind of turnover, which is usually associated with a whole lot of other uh, staff changing at the same time. If overnight you have uh, just briefly highly skilled minister and department head and um, with lots of money, how long would it take uh, to, to fix the system? It's an ongoing process. You would improve it the day that uh, you had two things. First, you need someone as head of department who does understand the technical work and secondly a politician who understands that their responsibility isn't to run the technical bits which they're not trained to it's to listen to what the problems are and then to take them into the political domain and make sure they get the right kind of support and the right kind of budget it shouldn't take too long it's possible to do it quite quickly but uh, i'm afraid what we have found now is that we have politicised the position of Minister Mokonyan. You know, and she has done some good things. But the problem is she's now identified as one of the cheerleaders for President Zuma. So you have to be very careful in trying to understand when you hear criticism, is this criticism because she's done something wrong or is this criticism because she supports the wrong boss? Uh, and that uh, complicates the matter further. Unfortunately, on that note, I have to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> this was Professor Mike Miller van Wits. Blijf in geskakel in gesprek is binnenkort terug.